Hello and welcome to Warrington and Wetley Rocks on this really rather sombre and sad week when we reflect on the loss of our beloved Queen Elizabeth II. Someone who I have to say I've grown fonder and fonder of especially in these last few years and it's really affecting me emotionally quite much more than I ever thought it would do but uh, we do mourn her loss today so discuss a little uh, reflection as I've been thinking about it. Well she is our Queen and Governor, the head of the Church of England and the professing Christian which has always given me great encouragement. It's said that about a third of the people in this country have seen her in person, some have even spoken to her. When I was at university, a student in Manchester, I remember going to see her then when she came opening a building or something and uh, I think the crowd was quite hostile to be honest. This was the 1980s and people in authority weren't held very highly, especially in the north. But the second time I saw her was in Liverpool Cathedral when I was a, a curate. A lovely chap called Harold was receiving Maundy money and he invited me and the vicar, I was the curate then, to uh, go with him to, to the cathedral and Her Majesty went round presenting the Maundy money. Very uh, short of stature of course so it was really hard to see her. Prince Philip thoroughly impressed me with just the way he read the Bible. He read it as you know someone who understood what he was saying. He wasn't just reading a menu or even a speech but the Bible and it showed he knew what it was about just the way he could read it and his faith had a great influence on Her Majesty too. You can see her faith in the Christmas messages like in 2000 she said the teachings of Christ and my own personal accountability before God provide a framework in which I try to lead my life. She took great comfort from Christ's example especially in the difficulties in her life and of course she was a teenager in the war she thrust into the limelight in her 20s and she knew personal tragedy like anyone else. In 2002's Christmas message she said she relies on her faith to guide her through good times and bad. She tried to live her life and do what's right and to put her trust in God. She drew strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. As time went on she became more and more explicit about her Christian belief. 2008 she said a hope that like me you'll be comforted by the example of Jesus of Nazareth often in great circumstances of adversity still lived an unselfish and sacrificial life you see where she gets her example of service from and there were many family situations which were very difficult for her, of course it would be difficult for anyone let alone perhaps the most famous woman in the world and she said in 2011, forgiveness lies at the heart of the Christian faith. It can heal broken families. It can restore friendships and reconcile divided communities. Jesus was neither a philosopher nor a general, but a savior with the power to forgive. The 2012 Christmas message was more like a sermon. God sent his son to serve, not to be served. It's my prayer, she said, that, that his example and teaching will continue to bring people together. And she talked about the carol in the bleak midwinter. What can I give him, poor as I am? The carol gives the answer, what I can I give him? I give my heart. Queen Elizabeth knew her place. She knew that she served the servant king. Her role as queen was unique, but she did it with such dignity and grace and love. So over my lifetime, I've certainly grown to respect her more and more. Whatever you say about the royal family in general, well, she's always been the best example of it, being above reproach in every respect. And I believe that's because of her deep faith in Jesus, the anchor of my life, she called her faith. In 2020, in COVID, she gave an Easter message too. And she said, Easter isn't cancelled. We need Easter as much as ever. She said, it's a reminder of Christ's resurrection. It's been passed on from the first generation of Christians. 
it gives his followers new hope and fresh purpose. We can all take heart from that. So we mourn the loss of this remarkable woman. In the words of the tributes from the bishops, we remember her strength, stability, inspiration, example, commitment, distinction, unfaltering, dependable, dutiful, devoted, faithful service. And we pray the same for each one of us that we may serve in our own ways. And we pray that as she remembered that Easter, that her death is a prelude to a glorious resurrection. Bible reading comes from John's Gospel. John chapter 6, verse 35 to 40. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you did not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you've given us in and through the life of your servant, Queen Elizabeth. We give you thanks for her love of family and her gift of friendship, for her devotion to this nation and the nations of the Commonwealth, for her grace, dignity and courtesy, and for her generosity and love of life. We praise you for the courage that she showed in testing times, the depth of her Christian faith and the witness she bore to it in word and deed. We pray for the Sovereign Lord. We pray for our Sovereign Lord the King and all the royal family. Lord that you might reassure them of your continuing love and lift them from the depths of grief into the peace and light of your presence. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made, and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord. And to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>